Question number one, which exploit is used to gather materials faster? Mat making, fast farming, or speed looting? The correct answer is fast farming. So if you pick that, mark a point. It's actually sort of interesting. I looked into the tactic and it's not really much of an exploit. Like it's not a bannable offense or anything. You won't get in trouble for using this in game. At least currently that is. I haven't found anyone that has got banned for doing this. Now there is a way to do it on a console, but it's really, really complicated. And in my opinion, is not worth learning how to do because you'll have to play on Combat Pro instead of Builder Pro. But those of you who are PC players like Tifu, check out this clip where Tifu explains fast farming. I need a new fast farm. You just switched from a throwable, dude. Question number two, which resolution is the best resolution to play on if you want the most competitive advantage on your enemies? A little hint is most pro players play on this resolution. Is it HD 1920 by 1080 or UHD 3840 by 1600 or stretched 1440 by 1080? Tifu, like many other pros, play on a stretch resolution of 1440 by 1080 square pixels. The reason why most Fortnite players prefer this display setting over normal HD or greater is a bit deeper than, oh well, it makes the player appear bigger. Though it is true, there are other benefits to this, such as improved FPS or frames per second. This basically means your game is going to process more frames per second, which makes it run a lot smoother. Pretty fair considering you're only losing about 500 pixels. Unfortunately, Epic Games recently banned stretch resolution in competitive. Most pros don't really agree with this. I'm not sure how I feel about it personally, but if the devs rule it to be illegal, then so be it. I actually did find a clip of Tifu reacting to normal resolution, and it was pretty funny, so I thought I'd share it with you guys before we get into the next clip. I'm gonna land right on there. Oh my god, I got caught on his ramp, bro! You have to fight or what? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. Come down, down, come here. Knocked one. Nice. There's another team launching on you right now, I think. Other guys, one shot, one shot, 10 HP, 10 HP. Above dead, me? dead, 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 dead. They're both dead. Uh, I'm about to stop playing stretch res, dude. Yeah, I'm not gonna play stretch res anymore for the same reason I ever wanted to play in the first place. Ugh, dude, no lie, chat, bro. I actually, this res is, dude. Uh, Why did I switch the res? For the same reason I never wanted to play stretch in the first place, dude. If there's any future tournaments coming up, we're not gonna let you play it. But at the end of the day, the player makes the player. Am I right? Am I right, chat, or am I wrong? Dude, like, if you don't have any business playing, like, or if you have no interest in playing this game competitively, just do yourself a favor and stretch that res, dog. That's all I'm saying. Our next question is number three, and it's gonna be pretty difficult. But real quick, I got a challenge for you guys, and you only have five seconds to accomplish it. Drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and if you're able to accomplish this in the next five seconds, you will have five years of incredible luck. Trust me, just try it. And with that out of the way, let's get back into question number three. Question number three, how much damage does a trap do? Is the answer 100, 200, or 150? The damage trap does 150 damage in every scenario. If you've been playing Fortnite for a little while though, you may be able to remember the time where it did 100. Personally, I like the traps a lot more like that, because if you just landed in Tilted Towers for example, 100 damage was enough for a trap to kill someone with no shield. I personally like the traps a lot more like that. And if you're watching this and you work at Epic Games, please nerf the damage back to 100. That's all I'm asking for, and let's move on to the next question. Question number four. How many med kits can be stacked in one inventory slot? One, three, or five? The maximum number of medkits that can be carried in one inventory slot is three. Question number five, which SMG is the best for destroying walls? The Tommy gun, P90, or MP5? The best SMG to use to counter a player in a build fight is the Tommy Gun. Not only is the size of its clip 10 rounds larger than the compact SMG, but it also does more structure damage than the compact SMG. Tommy Gun or LMG, of course, of course. The Tommy Gun's broken. A Tommy Gun and LMG are very similar weapons. Basically, an LMG's just got a wider spread 
but a bigger clip. It's all about the tightness, you know what I'm saying? LMG's loose, bro. We don't like that loose. It's not a landslide though. The Tommy gun only does one more structural damage than the compact SMG. I suppose if you'd rather have those extra 10 bullets before being forced to reload, then you may want to go with the compact SMG, but that's more of a personal preference. Statistically, the Tommy gun is the best SMG to counter building. Question number six. How many utility items like bounce pads, launch pads, and traps can be carried at once? 15, 20, or unlimited? The answer is there is no limit to the number of utilities that can be carried at one time. Question number seven, which is the best keyboard brand to use when playing Fortnite? A little hint is Tfue and a lot of professional players in the scene use this keyboard. Your options are SteelSeries, Razer, or Logitech. Almost all of Tfue's equipment is SteelSeries. His keyboard specifically is a SteelSeries Apex M750 TKL. He also uses a SteelSeries mouse and headset. If you want to do some research, you'll find that a lot of professional Fortnite players and streamers use this keyboard. For the most part, a keyboard is a keyboard, but this keyboard does have some really cool customization options since it's a keyboard designed with streaming and professional gaming in mind. The first option is going to be a custom key configuration. It also has color notifications that are meant for Discord. So basically, if you're getting a server invite or a Discord call, his keyboard will light up. Those are some really neat features worth mentioning considering I've never seen them on any other keyboard personally. I also want to say if you guessed Razer, I'll give you a point for that one as well. Steel Series and Razer is definitely what the pros stick to, and those two are the best answers in this case. On to the next question. Question number eight. What's the best sensitivity to be using in Fortnite? Low, medium, or high sensitivity? The answer is typically you want to stick to a high sensitivity. This allows you to build a lot faster, put walls around you faster. You don't want to go too high because then your accuracy can drop as it will become a lot harder to aim at longer distances with an assault rifle, but you definitely don't want to be in a low sensitivity and you don't really want to be in a medium sensitivity. Definitely on the higher end is typically what the pros stick to. For question number nine, I'm going to throw you guys a bit of a curveball. This is a question more about Tifu, and my question to you is, What's Tifu most known for? His no scopes, his fake no skin, or his exploits? We have two answers for this one. The first answer is Tifu is known for being a fake no skin. A no skin basically means a player that's purchased a skin or unlocked one through the battle pass, which basically means that he's a person that's a free to play, essentially a noob. These are pretty common nowadays and it can be accredited to Tifu. Basically Tifu started this trend where he would just wear no skins and other people now started to do that because it's kind of a fun troll to do it on people since people will think you're bad, you're a free to play person. I think you try not to actually be really good at Fortnite and you can completely trick him into underestimating you. The no skins it has to stop, dude. The fake no skins has to stop. Please. <laughs> this is what I could have done, man. I, I, I couldn't have done di anything differently. The, the dude shot at me to get my attention and hit behind a tree and was completely uh, like, completely covered. The tryhards and no skins are out in full force today, dude. So yeah, you're never gonna catch a default skin doing something like that. My advice to you is if you see a default skin, don't always underestimate them. The second correct answer is Tifu is known for his exploits. Recently, a video went very viral showing all the exploits Tifu's found in the game, which I'll play for you guys now. Yeah, Tifu finds exploits, that's what he does, man. You should have seen him back in H2Z1 and PUBG. He did the same stuff, that's what he does. All right, that's kind of OP. <laughs> Laser
question number 10. What's the best material to use in a build fight? Wood, stone, or steel? If you answered wood, then unfortunately you are wrong. Recently, Fortnite got an update that actually changed the amount of starting health different materials have when they're first placed. Previously, the materials that got the most starting health was wood, but now after that update, steel became the strongest material to use when in a build fight because it starts with the most health. Question number 11. Which weapon is the best for destroying buildings? The heavy sniper, heavy shotgun, or compact SMG? The answer is the Heavy Sniper does the most damage to any material in the game. It can even one-shot a fully built metal wall. This actually gives it more value than any other sniper in the game. Even if you're up close to the enemy in a build fight, you can quickly switch to the Heavy Sniper just to take out their wall, switch back to a different gun, and take them out super quick. Especially if you're on PC because Custom Binds makes it even easier to switch between specific weapons. Question number 12. Which area in the map has the most amount of chests in it? Tilted Towers, Retail Row, or Paradise Palms? The answer is Tilted Tower spawns the most chests. Question number 13. Which sniper is the most accurate? Bolt action, hunting rifle, or semi-automatic sniper? The hunting rifle is actually the most accurate sniper out of all these for a number of reasons. The first one being that it has the same single shot accuracy feature that assault rifles have. It may take longer for the first shot accuracy to charge up, but it does have it. The other snipers do not. Also, since it does have an actual sight, its hipfire is not as bad as the hipfire on other snipers, making it much easier to pop someone in an up-close engagement. Plus, even when you are aimed all the way down sights with a normal sniper rifle, there's still tons more bullet drop to compensate for. And with those sniper rifles, it's just never as simple as point and shoot. But the trade-off is that the hunting rifle doesn't put out as much damage as the heavy sniper rifle, the bolt action sniper rifle, so I do think it's fair enough. So that's gonna do it for today's test. On this test, there were 13 questions. In order to pass or be better than Tfue, you needed to get 12 right. If you still got 9 to 12 right, you're still really good at the game, and you should still pat yourself on the back. If you got anything below 9 points, then you'll need to play some more Fortnite, come back, retake the test, and then you'll be ready to pass. Let me know in the comments how you guys did. But anyway, it's been Exility. I had a great time making this test for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take it easy, have a great day, and I'll catch you guys next one. I'm out. Peace.